We've all seen Neutrogena's number one dermatologist recommended or nine out of 10 dentists recommend Sensodyne. <laughs> you can also create expert authority in your business by being interviewed on various podcasts, putting out reliable and high quality content in your niche, or by contributing to industry magazines and publications. That's why big brands pay a ton of money to have their products endorsed by a famous personality. For instance, George Clooney for Nespresso, Cardi B for Pepsi, and that all-time famous selfie by Ellen DeGeneres at the Oscars in 2014. Yeah, that was a big moment for Samsung. So MailChimp did a study and they found that open rates were 14.31% higher with segmented campaigns. And other studies have demonstrated that list segmentation increases revenue by 760%. <laughs> and quizzes like this one from mindmovies.com is another great way to segment and personalize your marketing. Now let's start with number one, social proof. There's no doubt that social proof is a powerful psychological trigger in copywriting and marketing. Seeing real evidence of other people using and liking our products makes us like a bazillion times more likely to believe it's a good product and trust the brand. Social psychologist Robert Cialdini talks a lot about this concept in his 1984 book, Influence. Now, while this book was written 35 years ago, recent scientific research proves that this concept is only getting more and more powerful over time. So according to a recent study, 92% of customers read online reviews before buying, compared to 88% in 2014. 40% of consumers form an opinion by reading just one to three reviews, versus 29% in 2014. And 88% of consumers trust online testimonials and reviews as much as recommendations from friends or family, versus 83% in 2014. So while social proof is not a new concept, it is more persuasive than ever. But there is one huge element of social proof that is actually expected from the market today, yet often overlooked by marketers. And that is the concept of demonstration. So in other words, showing real people using and consuming your product or service in real time. So while written or verbal user testimonials are still very effective, as you can see by the stats I just shared, people today want proof. The market is more savvy than ever and they can sniff out a staged or incentivized testimonial like that. So make it crystal clear to your audience that the social proof you're featuring is 100% real and organic and make it really, really easy for your customers to submit user-generated content, images, stories, or videos showcasing the product in action. By combining positive user feedback with demonstration, you'll increase believability, add massive trust, and make your marketing significantly more persuasive. On to trigger number two, authority. So another powerful psychological trigger Shildini studied is the principle of authority. It's the tendency for people to accept an opinion, product, or service if it is supported by a perceived expert or authority figure. Showcasing authority makes you look legit and helps gain your audience's trust in a big, big way. So I like to break down this concept into three different types. The first is expert authority. So if you are perceived as an expert or an authority in a particular industry, your words hold more weight. You automatically have more credibility. So this can come from more concrete credentials like diplomas, degrees, or awards, or press coverage. I'm sure many of you have seen the as seen on banner on websites that features different press logos. Or it can also be a recommendation from a highly specialized or respected individual. For example, anytime you see a doctor, a scientist, a celebrity, or an accredited professional endorse a product or service, the authority principle is at play. We've all seen Neutrogena's number one dermatologist recommended, or nine out of 10 dentists recommend Sensodyne. <laughs> you can also create expert authority in your business by being interviewed on various podcasts, putting out reliable and high quality content in your niche, or by contributing to industry magazines and publications. All right, so the second type of authority is celebrity authority. Celebrities have mad cultural and social capital and therefore a high degree of perceived authority, despite having no expertise on the subject matter. That's why big brands pay a ton of money to have their products endorsed by a famous personality. For instance, George Clooney for Nespresso, Cardi B for Pepsi, and that all-time famous selfie by Ellen DeGeneres at the Oscars in 2014. Yeah, that was a big moment for Samsung. And lastly, the third type of authority is influencer authority. So this type of authority didn't really exist when Cialdini wrote his book in 1984, but no one today can deny the fact that online influencers have a massive amount of authority. The more followers you have, the more authority you have, it is as simple as that. And that is why many brands spend millions of dollars on influencer marketing each year. 
You don't have to look very far to see examples of influencer authority in action. Simply search the hashtag ad on Instagram and voila. All right, let's move on to trigger number three, scarcity. Hi, yes, another one of Shieldini's favorite persuasion principles. In marketing, scarcity refers to the concept of making products or services limited in some way and therefore harder to obtain. It really gives your prospect a reason to buy now because if they don't, they could miss out. So we see scarcity used in marketing all around us because it works. Humans are inherent procrastinators, so if we know that we can get the same thing at the same price later without any repercussions or sacrifices, we will absolutely wait until later, no question about it. So the four most common types of scarcity are price, so a limited time discount, quantity, a limited amount left, premium, limited time bonuses, and offer. The cart is only open for a limited time. And that leads me to number four on my list, a reason why. So a four-year-old that follows you around the house asking you why after everything you say is, albeit annoying, a reflection of a fundamental human desire to need to understand the rationale behind a person's actions or opinions in order to actually believe it. So when using scarcity, your copy also needs to clearly and effectively communicate a big reason why the offer is limited without it being hypey, pushy, or misleading. Is it because of a special event like Labor Day, a limited inventory, or maybe the doors are closing like some of the examples I just showed you. Our brains are far more likely to believe something is true, real, or legit when a reason or justification is given. So in your marketing and copy, it's always wise to include a reason why you're selling a product, why you're giving a discount, and why you're limiting the sale by using any sort of scarcity, because you need to make it believable in the minds of your prospects. All right, now let's move on to number five, active voice. So as much as possible in your marketing, you want to use something called active voice rather than passive voice. Now here's a quick distinction between the two. Active voice, the subject of the verb is doing the action. Passive voice, the subject undergoes the action rather than doing it. So for example, he handled it versus the it was handled by him. Or monkeys love bananas versus bananas are loved by monkeys. Or you listen to this presentation versus the presentation is being listened to. So as a rule of thumb, use the word you as much as possible in your marketing. It's a power word for a reason. The most interesting topic to people is themselves. And when you say you, you can be fairly certain you're writing in an active voice. Sentences in active voice are also more persuasive because they are grammatically simple, simple as that. Almost always, always, always active voice sentences have fewer words than the passive voice alternative, like in the examples that I just shared. These shorter, punchier sentences increase processing fluency because readers can digest your messages more easily and they're more likely to experience a positive emotion or association with active voice because it commands attention. Number six, personalization. Using personalization in your marketing is a powerful psychological trigger. It doesn't only keep people's attention, but studies have actually shown that it makes people feel more in control and therefore makes them more receptive to your information because it reduces their perception of information overload, which in today's day and age, we're all feeling a little bit of information overload. So including personalization in your marketing, like addressing your prospects by their first names or remembering their birthdays or mentioning previous actions and order history can actually go a long, long way. It shows your subscribers that you're taking the measures to customize their experience with you. It doesn't only make them feel special and important, but it does impact your bottom line. In fact, personalized subject lines have 50% higher open rates. Even though everybody and their dog knows that personalization in email is automated, it still works. But beyond these classic examples of personalization, you can use marketing tools to further customize a user's journey with your brand and products. Increasing personalization in your marketing across all channels can lead to a massive 500% increase in consumer spending. Yeah, you heard that right, 500%. So as you're creating your sales funnels and your email sequences and your marketing campaigns, take the time to consider who is consuming that content and how you might want to adapt your messaging for different audience segments. So MailChimp did a study and they found that open rates were 14.31% higher with segmented campaigns. And other studies have demonstrated that list segmentation increases revenue by 760%. <laughs> and quizzes like this one from mindmovies.com is another great way to segment and personalize your marketing. All right, moving on to number seven on my list, coherence markers. 
Using coherence markers adds clarity and contributes to more persuasive messaging. Now, if you're like, uh, Alex, what in the heck are coherence markers? Think of them as transition sentences or what I call bridge words that connect two ideas or concepts together through different paragraphs. Even though they might not have the nicest syntax or be grammatically correct by academic standards, they make copy clear and easy to understand. So remember, the average reading level is somewhere around the eighth grade, so you wanna keep your messaging simple to make it persuasive. Now here's a list of common bridge words that I frequently use. The thing is, but truthfully, now, but here's the thing, and here's why. For example, but surprisingly, although, in other words, in short, listen. You see, those bridge words or connective sentences often end with ellipses to indicate transitions and keep people engaged with a more conversational tone and flow. All right, so let's move on to number eight, a common enemy. Sociologist George Simmel said it best when he stated that nothing unites a nation or any group of people for that matter quite like having a common enemy. And no, I'm not saying that you should go all political in your copywriting because that will major backfire, especially right now, but rather rally your audience around a common cause, viewpoint, or belief that aligns with their sense of identity. A research study done by psychology prof Dr. Mark Landau indicates that people have a basic need for coherence or for things to make sense. They want to belong to a group who views the world in the same way they do. So communicating a common enemy in your copywriting and messaging is a great way to create this sense of belonging. But plot twist, the enemy does not have to be a person. It can be anything that stands in opposition to what your audience strives for and believes in. 